Well, praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Robert Lamb. Um, I was in a conversation the other day um, about the witch of Endor. Um, we find the story in 1 Samuel chapter 28. And it had been a while since I had actually read this. And um, at the time, uh, um, I felt a little differently. than when, But when I went back and, and went through this um, a little closer, um, I find that... Um, my view of this story is, is, has changed, and um, so I thought we'd look at it a little closer, and um, and uh, um, I'd share my findings with you, and um, and see what you think. First um, Samuel chapter twenty-eight. We're going to start with verse three. Now Samuel Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. So we see Samuel the prophet had died, and, and um, Saul the king um, had put away, it says, put away those that had familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Now something that I found strange here is they shouldn't have been in the land in the first place because uh, um, God had, um, you know, is against the law. I mean, the law of God. Um, as a matter of fact, they were to be stoned. Um, um, and here we have, you know, Saul just now putting them out of the land. You know, I congratulate him for doing that. Um, but let's read on and see what happens. Verse 4, And the Philistines gathered themselves together, and came and pitched in Shenuam. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart was greatly troubled. Now, um, when when we we see that uh, uh, the Philistines uh, are are encamped here and, and the Israelites are encamped here and, and obviously Saul can see them and and he he's afraid he becomes afraid um, and you know um, he shouldn't have been afraid because he should have had his his trust in the Lord and I know sometimes that's easier said than done but it's true nevertheless. Um, God had told Israel over and over that that He would, you know, that He would fight for them, um, that they would be uh, successful in their victory, they would be victorious. Um, but uh, Saul was scared and was trembling. Um, he so we see already right here that Saul ha did not uh, have his faith in the Lord. Verse six, and when Saul inquired of the Lord. The Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. So the Lord didn't answer his dream, uh, his uh, answer him by any dreams, you know, like the Lord does sometimes from dreams and visions, or, or by Urim. Um, if you don't know what a Urim is, um, you can read it about it in Exodus 28, I think it is. Um, but basically, the high priest would wear um, a breastplate. And um, and uh, they had these. I think it was twelve stones, and they would um, um, is uh, a breastplate, a judgment, or something words to that effect. And and um, they would ask certain questions of the Lord, and these stones would light up and give them the answers. So um, he he didn't get an answer by the Lord that way, or by the prophets. Verse seven. Then said Saul unto the, his servants. Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Now, here we see, Saul, we just read where Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and witches, wizards, out of the land. Now, because, again, we see a lack of faith. Um, he, because he wasn't getting an answer of the Lord, which he should have already had his answer, because the Lord promised him victory. Um, but he wasn't getting his answer from the Lord, and so he he went and, to witchcraft. He turned to witchcraft. Uh, I hear of Christians that read their horoscope. You know what? That's witchcraft. You need to come out of that garbage. So here we see uh, Saul um, not only breaking his own law, but breaking... God's law by bringing in um, a soothsayer. Uh, um, we can't be using witchcraft. Which there ain't no look, There ain't no such thing as black uh, witchcraft and white witchcraft. Witchcraft is evil. Period. 
It doesn't matter. You can have your little story. Samantha Stevens, if she was a witch, she was evil. Plain and simple. Um, also, something I find interesting here is, you know, he, he Saul told, I, I don't know why, but he asked for a woman that had familiar spirits. And, but, and he t his servants told him, well, King, we know where one is. There's just one right over here in Endor. I find that kind of interesting that they already knew where one was, you know. Anyway, verse 8. And Saul disguised himself, and he put on other raiment, and he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto her, him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath put off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? She, she knew the law. She knew that which, witches were to be killed. Um, um, but um, so here they come to this this uh, uh, woman with the, the familiar spirit. And she tells him, you know, that Saul says, I can't do this. You know, y'all are trying to trick me into this. Verse 10. And Saul swear to her by the Lord. Now, that's pretty bad. He swore to her by the Lord. As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. My goodness. So, he swore on the Lord. As the Lord liveth. No punishment shall happen to you for this. Uh, other than, of course, you'll burn in hell for eternity. I guess that ain't enough. But anyway, um, so we see, you know, once we lose faith and get into to stupidity, you just keep falling further and further into stupidity. Amen? Uh, verse 11, Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel the prophet that had died. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Now, this is where we start getting into some of the meat of the potatoes, so to speak. Because um, I found this interesting. I always thought that um, she didn't actually bring up Saul. That this was just some kind of a uh, um, evil spirit tricking them or something, um, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. But um, look what's what's said here. It says, "And the woman saw who, Samuel, and she cried with a loud voice." Now you know what that kind of tells me. I don't think she expected to see Samuel. I think she was a fake, and she knew what she was a fake. You can't call up on uh, um, um, dead people, and she knew it. But she made her living doing this. And all of a sudden, here was Samuel. How do I know? Because the Bible says, and she saw Samuel. And um, I think it scared her. And she cried with a loud voice. Um, also, it says that all of a sudden now she knows this is Saul. So um, that's another thing that tells, tells me maybe this really is Samuel here. Um, verse uh, 13, And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God descending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he? And, and she said, An old man cometh up, and is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground, and bowed himself. Now the word Words here where it says Saul perceived that it was Samuel. This is why I used to think that um, um, this was just some kind of evil spirit playing a trick on, 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 on him, you know. But, you know, then the next very next verse, what we see? It says, And Samuel, who? And Samuel said to Saul. Now, who's talking to Saul? Samuel. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore have I called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Now, so we see here that Samuel asked Saul 
Why have you disquieted me? Why have you awakened me from my slumber? Uh, um, and brought me up. Notice it says, brought me up. Uh, he was not in heaven. Um, um, well, that's a whole different thing. We won't get into that. But um, Notice, here we go. He, he's going further and further into his stupidity, into his sin. Um, not a, Again, uh, it, not only is he not trusting God, but he has trusted this prophet so much that he's trusting him so much that he's bringing him from the dead to ask him what to do. Um, um, you can't put your trust in a man. I don't care who he is. If it, you can't, you know what? You can't trust the prophet. You got to trust the word. You got to trust God. If God, if God's word promises you something, I don't care what prophet tells you. If it don't add up with the word, you need to just put that stuff away. It ain't no good. It ain't no good because it's worthless. That's why. Verse 16, Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? This is why he wasn't getting his answer. Because he kept going out of the will of God. He kept going out of the will of God. You, let me tell you something, folks. If you're living in sin, and, and then you want to raise your hands and praise God, that he, ain't, he ain't seeing that. It, ain't, it doesn't mean nothing to him. Because if your heart ain't, ain't with him, you don't want, you're just wasting your time. You're just wasting your time. And that's what we see here. And he has become an enemy of God. An enemy of God. And the Lord hath done him as he spake by me. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. So he lost the kingdom to David. Um, um, it was bad enough what he had done before. Um, but now he has gone plumb into evil. Come into evil because he didn't have faith in the Lord. Um, uh, verse 18, Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek, which is the other thing he did wrong, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto this thee this day. Done what thing? Brought up Samuel. The Lord allowed Samuel to come back out of the grave for this very reason. How do I know? Well, that's what we just read. It's what we just read. You know, so many times we we um we see something, and I think we're all guilty of this. I am. I'll admit I've been guilty of it. We we get in our mind that um uh, uh uh well this can't be true because that just wouldn't be of God. Um, that's why I didn't believe this. That uh uh this they they were really talking to Samuel here. I thought well that would be witchcraft. But we see very clearly if we just believe what the Bible says that yeah. God allowed this. Why? Well, we just read it. Uh, um, um, because of the, what He has done unto them this day. That's what it says. Verse 18. Plain in day. Plain as day. We need to just start believing what the Word says and, and leave all this man-made garbage out. Our minds are not uh, uh, what the same as the Lord sometimes. We need to seek His mind. We need to seek His mind and forget about what we think. Because what we think doesn't matter. It's about what he, he wants. It's His will that shall be done, not ours. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. And um, anything that you may want to bring up, that's fine. I, I, I appreciate all comments. Praise the Lord. God bless.